Before I started on this journey with the music, I spent uh, 10 years unplugged in Australia from, from newspapers, from TV, from movies, from radio. Um, I, I didn't even have a telephone in the beginning. I didn't have electricity. And I really learned a lot from nature and I learned that uh, to imitate nature is a way to um, be harmonious because mm. nature's tendency is always harmony. Even, even if you let this field go, there might be uh, weeds that grow and they seem not harmonious, but they're actually preparing the soil for a forest. It's all actually serving one another and integrated. And so I treat the music in the same way. When I play in a new place, I'm planting a seed. I don't try to harvest anything, I just give. And, and then I come back and water it. And then when I first came across the mantra, I was at a big gathering and there was a small group of people uh, sitting in a circle chanting the Gayatri Mantra. Mm -hmm. And when I heard it, it was like, it's like I heard this nectar coming from the ethers, you know, and I just literally dropped everything and just walked towards it and found this group of people. And I just looked at them, they were sitting in a circle. I believe that the circle is our greatest strength. And if I am true to what I'm singing about, which is that we are one, then it's my greatest strength as well. And uh, I feel that um, there's strength in humility, there's strength in community. And uh, there's also a lot of fulfillment in that as well. So I find it humiliating to be elevated um, by others above. Mm -hmm. And I usually do what I can to sort of resolve that, whether I just I behave really stupidly or, <laughs> or say something really, you know, me, because I'm just like everyone else. It's just that I'm dedicated to this cause and I think we all have our parts to play in this in this life. So for me, I don't see myself as, as any more important or deserving to be up on any kind of pedestal. Not that I see stages as a pedestal. I think some people can be on a stage and, and it's great because you can see them and hear them if it's a performance, but this isn't a performance. This, yeah. is, this is a, um, a devotional um, music uh, reconnecting to the heart, reconnecting as community mm. and that feeling of togetherness is much easier if we're here sitting together and we can join hands. So I have less musicians, less sound and bring people in mm. to the bare minimum. When you play music as a musician there's this word that we use, it's called the zone. In the zone. And when you go into the zone there's no time, there's no thinking about the future or the past, you can't. If as soon as you do, you go out of the zone. Right. Um, you can't even really think about what you're doing. It's kind of like a trance. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very similar to the state we're in for the first couple of years of our life. Mm -hmm. uh, so you don't have any worries. There's no space for fear. And it's very elating, it's very like, you just want to be in it forever, but you can't. So every song has to has has an end, you know. But um, that's kind of the essence of kirtan is sharing that zone. And even though the words, the mantras are quite specific compared to other music, it's because it's aligning the, an intention to take us into that zone in a sacred way. All the things we call bad are just really not harmonious. Mm -hmm. They're not supporting life. Mm -hmm. And all the things we call good are supporting life. Mm -hmm. And how do we do good things? Well, we, we look beyond our own self-interest and try and do something good that's for every, like, I mean, it's, it's difficult to explain, but it's so obvious when we're connected to our heart mm. because our heart always wants everybody to be lifted. Mm. And 
Um, and not only that, if you live close to your heart, if you feel that, con that connection, it's more than your heart, it's your whole body. You know, it's a step out of the, the um, constant thoughts and move into a more feeling existence, then you'll just notice that everybody's lifted by your being in the world. And naturally, um, we become harmonious in all of our thoughts, words, actions, and deeds, and it's effortless. And that's why, that's why I think um, connecting um, is so important. And then chanting, um, mantra, kirtan, is by far the most powerful way to do that, to, to re-establish that connection. Um, some experiences myself, but also reports from people that it hits them. Like it, it, can, it can hit you in the heart. It's that strong. Yeah. Yeah, what I said is that it, it provides it provides that uh, space for devotion for people who want to get away from corrupted religions. I'm not saying all religions are corrupt, but that a lot of them are, and mm. and it might be also just the people who are actually practicing it. But um, I can safely say that there's a lot of corruption within religion and. Um, and dogma mm -hmm. and so I think this offers a place for people to come and express their their love for the the whole mm -hmm. their love for it for their for their heart for, for God whatever label you want to put on it it's connecting to something bigger than your own imaginary self that you're sometimes quite trapped in mm -hmm. you know, I'm always thinking about me and my and I'm I'm imagining that I'm separate from all this, but it's actually a facade. It's not the, it's not the reality. Mm. The reality is that we are an integrated whole, all of us. Mm. And um, to have that experience is something that doesn't necessarily mean you're thinking that you're separate all the time or thinking about yourself, but you've had that experience. Mm. And you can take that into your life and maybe get use your asana or use your exercise or knitting or whatever you do just to remember and and reconnect or or just be more um, connected in the way that you interact with people be more kind or loving Oh, I would like to see um, people coming together and singing and really like just flying high in, in the, the spirit of devotion and love and yeah, yeah have beautiful gatherings and, and I'd also like to um, connect with the, the traditional culture a bit. And, and of course embrace the new, but um, I really like the old Chinese culture. Mm. I had a taste of it when I was in the Yunnan. Mm. Mm. Well, I hope that um, I can contribute to an awakening to that, the, because it's really, um, I'll use the word spiritual, but the spiritual side of yoga. And I think that um, whether you call it connected to the source or spirituality, but um, to, to have your spiritual practice, it really gives you uh, a grounding in truth. Mm -hmm. And without that grounding, um, I don't think that you, you'll ever really get close to the ultimate goal of yoga, which is what they call samadhi or unification with the source, the Tao. Um, it's not knowable, so um, the mind has its place, but it must serve, not, not dominate, not rule, because it, it's always trapped in a hall of mirrors. Also interested in 
um, inspiring other people to, to chant as well and to lead chanting or participate in other chanting. Um, I'm int interested in cultivating a movement. I'm not necessarily the one that tells people they should do it. I just want to, I want to be the example and, I, and the hope that someone will look at what I'm doing and go, oh wow, I could do that. If you want to create a positive change in this world, do something so beautiful that other people want to be a part of it. Dajia hao, Kevin. Zhongguo Xian.